Good morning. It's good to see each one of you with us here today. Glad that you're here. But most of all, I'm glad Jesus is here. Amen. 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 Would you stand with us as we begin today? Father, we just thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. We thank you for the day you've blessed us with. And Lord, we've come into this house to give praise, honor, and glory to your marvelous name. Have your way in each of our hearts, each of our lives. And Lord, we come to you today as a vessel. And our cry out to you today, Lord, is fill our cup. Fill it up to overflowing. Use us. Minister your will in our hearts and in our lives. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's worship him today as we sing, fill my cup, Lord. Oh
every name. We give praise and glory and honor to you, for you are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. We exalt you, O Lord, today. We ask for the Holy Spirit to move and minister as you desire to do today in our hearts and in our lives. We come into your midst today. We worship you. Have your way in each of us. Lord, those among us that are crying out for different needs, Lord, we pray that you would move and minister today. We pray for Andy's father, James. We pray, God, that you would minister to him as he goes in for surgery tomorrow. Lord, we're believing you to God, the doctors and the nurses, for you to bring healing in his body. May his recovery be rapid. And we thank you for your overshadowing care, for the comfort that you're going to give to every member of the family for the way you're going to move and minister today. We give you praise. We pray for Nancy's brother, Johnny, the Lord in a hospital. We pray, God, that you would move and minister. I pray that you would touch and bring healing in his body. Lord, get his way back together. We thank you for what you're going to do, for the way you're going to move. We pray that you would clean out his lungs, move and minister by the power of your spirit. Lord, touch him, for by your stripes he is made whole, and we claim that he is today. For Denise, so we pray, God, that he continue to minister, continue to move, undergird by your might and power. May your recovery continue to be strong, and we thank you for what you've already done and for the way you've moved and ministered. For Augusta, God, continue to minister to her, touch her, bring healing. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. For Susan, Lord, touch her eyes. I pray, God, that you would move. <coughs> As the doctors are talking about surgery, Lord, that you would move and minister and touch and bring healing in her today. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're concerned about every area of our lives, everything that touches us and affects us. For Ms. Esther, we believe you to touch her and minister healing. May she just teach your strength. May your glory fill that room where she is right now. Lord, may she just sense your awesome power and presence. Have your way, O Lord, today. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you've already done, for what you've made available to us. We give you praise. Lord, we look back and we are reminded of the goodness of God and how repeatedly you have moved and ministered and met needs and brought you healing. And Lord, we believe that you are more than able to do it again. And we pray, God, that you would do it in every heart, in every life, in every mind. Have your way on one today. As on the day of Pentecost, your spirit was poured out on this earth. May your spirit arise in our hearts and in our lives again today. Do it again, Lord, I pray in this house. Do it again, Lord, as your will is, we pray. Thank you for what you're going to do. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I have to admit, though, you scared me to death a few times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I read a book by that title several years ago. I thought it was kind of funny at the time, and then I've lived life, and I've realized, you know, there are times when I'm going, okay, God, any time now. I thought you would have done this yesterday. I know you've never been there. You've always been patient, and you've always waited on the Lord really well, but some of us are not as good as you is. <clears throat> I'm thankful he loves us I'm thankful that he knows us and I'm reminded of that more and more and more the more I study the word and the more I look at it and I shared this a couple weeks ago about Moses that you know okay God carried him up on top of Mount Nebo showed him the land this is the promised land, you're not going in because of your disobedience. But God knew him before. Before he was ever born, God knew exactly what was going to be. And, and, and I, I'm not saying that that's, that's an excuse for our disobedience. That's not what I'm saying. I would to God that we would all be faithful in everything. But I'm thankful that when I mess up, I got a high priest Amen. who knows the feeling of our infirmities and knows how to minister to us in our time of need. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I when I think about it, and, and I, you know, I, I've lived probably what half of my life. <laughs> I live to be 132. <clears throat> and I look at things a lot different now than when I started pastoring in 1978. And I think about that first church, and, and, and I, did, I didn't preach error, I didn't preach, I preached the word. But I look at things differently. It's just like some of my best sermons about raising kids was before I had kids. I could tell you how to do it, and I knew all the things, and I knew, I, yes, here it is, here it is. And then we had three. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And all those times we said, our kids will never do that. Boy. I'm thankful that God understands us even when we don't understand everything. I'm thankful for his grace and his mercy. And part of that is his spirit. Because you see, last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. It was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It was 50 days from the resurrection of Christ or from the death of Christ. And and he's been on the earth 40 days. He ascends to heaven. There's been waiting 10 more days. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, which was actually the birth of the church. And the 50 days was nothing <clears throat> new. It was about 50 days from the time of the exodus from Egypt to the giving of the law. And at the giving of the law, about 3,000 people died because while Moses was up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, they got impatient and built a, a, a golden calf and were celebrating and, and God opens up the earth and 3,000 people die. Aren't you thankful that God keeps track of things because on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit fell on those 120 in the upper room and those that were in Jerusalem Hearing this and seeing these people and some people thinking they're drunk, but every person that was there, because of the celebrations going on from all parts of the earth, heard the message of the gospel in their own language. And 3,000 people were added to the church. 
fool. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible goes on to say that he continually adds those that will, are going to be saved. And you say, so he's only adding the people he wants to add. No, he's adding the people who will say yes. Because the Bible says you and I have to make that decision. He's not going to just automatically go, you're in, you're out. It's our decision. <coughs> and the Holy Spirit was the birth of the church. It was the, the equipping power that Jesus said, look, <clears throat> I've got to go, and, and I talked about this Wednesday night. Denise and I shared Wednesday night about uh, these words of Jesus when he said, you know, it's, it's beneficial for you if I go. And the, the problem is, I've been saying I'm leaving, and nobody's asking me where I'm going. You're just upset because I said I was leaving. But it's important that you understand that I've got to go because if I don't go, he doesn't come. But if I go, I will give him to you. I will send him to you. And there's so many things that I want to share with you. There's so many things I want to teach you. But you can't handle them now. How many of us realize that the longer we serve the Lord, the more we understand? That doesn't mean we're going to understand it all in this life because I am convinced that there's so much that you and I will never understand in this life. We see through a glass darkly. We see things. We, we catch glimpses of things, but we don't understand it all. And anybody that tells you they've got it all down pat and they understand it all and they know how everything's going to happen at the end and all the all the unveiling of, of the end days, and they understand all the things that are going to happen. No, you don't. You have an idea. You have a thought. It may well be some of your thoughts, but can I tell you something? That was one of the problems with the people of the day of Jesus. They were looking for him to come in a manner that he didn't come, and they missed him. Lord, I just want you to come in whatever manner you desire to do today. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss the day of visitation. I don't want to miss the day that you have for me. I don't want to miss what you want to do in my heart and in my life. I don't want to miss it. I want to be there. I want to participate. I know I can't do it in myself, and that's the reason that you've given me your spirit. And I think it's important that we understand some basic elements of, of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk to you about today for just a moment. <clears throat> when do I receive it? And I think the Bible clearly tells us that. And I want, I want to look at it this morning for a few moments. In Romans chapter 8, verses 9 and 10, he says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. <coughs> and if Christ <coughs> is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of life because of righteousness. And he said, look, I want you to understand, the Holy Spirit, we, 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 when you say, Lord, I'm a sinner, come into my life, who do you think comes in? The Spirit of God. We have this, if you are saved, I'll stay with you, you have this Spirit. If you say, no, I haven't, I don't have the spirit, then the Bible says you're not saved. You're not his. The spirit bears witness with us. 
First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 says, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. These references emphasize the fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in each person who has received Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, now hold on. However, there's a difference between knowing the blessing of God's salvation to you and knowing the dynamic as it begins to flow through you. We can't even be saved if God doesn't draw us. Do we realize? Well, I'll decide one day that I'll get saved. The Bible says in John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. No one can just... We have to be drawn. Now, how does he draw us? Two things. By the word, we hear the word. By the Spirit. The Word and the Spirit working together draws us, but, but God opens that door. God makes it available to us. The Bible says, my Spirit will not always work with man, draw man. Because you see, I believe that we can refuse and reject Christ to the point that the Spirit goes, I've knocked, and I've knocked, and I've knocked, and I've knocked. And it gets harder, and it gets harder, and it gets harder, and it gets harder. The more we reject Him, the harder it becomes. Bible even talks about the fact that there are times that God just gives us over to our reprobate minds. So I'm just simply saying, if you feel the Holy Spirit knocking at your door, if you hear the word and it, 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 it causes you to begin to think and causes you to desire to to know him, then I ask you, I beg you, don't push him off. Don't repel him. Don't reject him. Don't refuse him. But open the door and allow him to move and minister in your heart and in your life. Don't play the game of Russian roulette. I don't know when that line is. I don't know when that time is. For one thing, I don't know how long each of us have. This day, could be my last day. It could be your last day. And to say, well, I'm going to wait till I'm 70 years old and then I'll give my heart to Jesus. We have no guarantee we're going to get to 70. No, that really bums us out if we're 69. But those of us that are 66 have no guarantee that we're going to get to 67. As a matter of fact, there's not one person in here that is promised the next breath. Well, Pastor, thank you for encouraging us today. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to get us to realize our own mortality and the fact that we need Jesus and we can't afford to push him off and prolong and wait for a better day because the better day may be today. Today is the day of salvation. Today, open up your heart. Open up. And you say, okay, okay, I, I, I've accepted Jesus. I, I, I'm, a, I'm living for him. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. 
You know what that means? When we are saved, we're all one. Whether Jew or Gentile, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink of one spirit. That's salvation. That's when we come into the body of Christ. We are all one. Listen, we're, we're not Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian. No. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we're one body. When we get to heaven, it's not going to be sectioned off. I remember this story of one guy that died and went to heaven, and, and, and he's being shown around heaven, and they got to a certain place, and they said, Why do we have to be quiet here? Because those are the Pentecostals over there and they think they're the only ones here. <laughs> you know Jesus? <laughs> we got a lot in common. Hey, we may disagree on a lot of things. We may see things differently. But I can tell you that when you look at the body of Christ and even in in, in different denominations and while it may not be the ideal situation, God has used different groups to minister and to reach different people and there are people that will not be reached unless we reach them. When I say we, I'm talking about we are the witnesses that are to witness to them. We are to share the hope and love of Jesus Christ with them. Just like I believe that there are people that I can lead to Jesus but there are some people that won't hear me that will hear Robert. And they may not hear Robert, but they will hear Edward. What I'm simply saying is God wants to use Edward. And, and who am, Jesus said, his own disciples said, look, there are people over there that we don't know. And he said, look, if they're not against us, they're for us. Stop. will tell you that not everybody that says Lord, Lord is going. And that's true in every denomination. Right. Because you see, it's not whether or not you've gone to church for 50 years. It's do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I will never forget one Sunday. And it's been years ago. Pastoring a church. And one Sunday morning, there was a man that got up from the back of the church, came down to the altar, and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. He'd been in that church most of his life. His wife was the treasurer of the church. He played a harmonica. very wonderful man. But until that Sunday morning, he didn't know Jesus. And people were like, I share that because can I tell you something? You can sit on every pew in every church and it doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in your garage makes you a car. takes a relationship with Jesus Christ. It takes a relationship with Him. God help us. God help us. That we realize, you know what? Left to myself, left on my own, there's no telling what I might do. I, I might do crazy things. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ saving me, and putting his spirit inside of me and leading and God in the there, there's no telling what I might do. Oh, I was reminded of that yesterday. Kristen sent us a little a little uh, video. And she got busy doing schoolwork and Ronnie was working with Brooks and it left Brody and Collins kind of to their selves. And the next thing you know, they hear this racket. And they go out there, and Brody and Collins have got on football helmets. They're at the top of the stairs with a box, 
and they're sliding the box down the steps. And it gets about halfway and they tumble out and they're just laughing like crazy. <laughs> There's no telling what we would do if we're left to ourselves. Now, I don't know if you would go down a set of steps in a cardboard box. But there have been times I've done some crazy things, which we're not going to go into depth about or talk about this morning. <laughs> I would venture to say most of us in this building have done some crazy things. Um. Let's take a... No. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for salvation that saves us and sets us on a new course and puts inside of us his spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us and to... to, to to give us warning to say, oh, 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 don't, don't do that. No, no, no. You might not want to go there. You know, we need to hear the Spirit of the Lord. We need to be in tune with the Spirit of God that is inside of us so that we hear those warnings and we heed those warnings. You know, when Jesus was on the face of the earth, everything was still under the old covenant. And it wasn't until his death and resurrection that the blood was shed for the remission of sins. And I want you to notice in John 20, 22. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. He's with his disciples. It's before Acts 2. It's before his ascension. And he says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. You know what that was? They had believed, but they hadn't received the Spirit. Because he had not yet been given. And the death and resurrection had not yet happened. But after the death and the resurrection, Jesus said, Now we don't, when we say, Lord, I'm a sinner, come into my heart and into my life. Start a new creation in me. That's exactly what he does. And he puts part of himself in us through his spirit. That's not what we call the baptism of the spirit or with the spirit. It's simply salvation, that, that the Spirit of God is resident in us. But, but, but we're new. And we don't understand everything. And that's part of this walking this thing out. And it's also part of our understanding that in order for us to be everything that God's wanting us to be, we have to be and dwell with the fullness of the Spirit. John chapter 1, verse 29 to 33 says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I did not know him in verse 33. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom I see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. John says, look, I baptize with water, but he's the one that's going to baptize with the Spirit. I want you to understand, it is Jesus who baptizes us with the Spirit. That's what he told his disciples. He said it is it is imperative that I go because if I don't go, the Comforter can't come. But if I go, I will send him to you. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That's what Jesus, now listen to me, that's what Jesus told his disciples 
before his ascension. But in John, we just read that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And now he's telling them that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. If you'll just go wait and tarry in Jerusalem until it comes. See, the Spirit of God is alive in us. But he's wanting a deeper walk in our lives. He's wanting to take us to the next step. And can I tell you, in the days in which we live, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because that's exactly what Jesus said would happen. He said, when you are baptized with the Spirit, you shall receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And what he's trying to get us to see is that we need the Holy Spirit. We need him alive in us. You need the Holy Spirit to go to Walmart. Especially to go through the parking lot. People do crazy. I, I realize today I do crazy things. On the way to church this morning, I looked down the road. I didn't see anybody coming. I pulled out, and <laughs> destiny went around me. I'm going, cool. Thank you, Jesus. It was somebody I knew because she could have. She could have. Mm -hmm. I do stupid things, too. <laughs> we all do. We all do. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just thankful that the Holy Spirit is inside of us to empower us to do what he's calling us to do. It doesn't mean that we won't be human. It doesn't mean that we won't trip up. It doesn't mean that we won't falter. But it does mean we can have the ability to live the life that he's calling us to live that we would never have if we didn't have his spirit inside of us. The difference between us as New Testament believers and the Old Testament believers is we have the power to live the life that they didn't have. We need it. John 7, verses 38 to 39 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. How does those rivers of living water come? Only through the Spirit of God. Can I tell you something? And I know, I know I'm not anything special, and I know other people have gone through what I've gone through are worse things. But I stand here today, I don't know how people go through life and go through the hurts and the losses and the disappointments and they don't have something inside of them that gives them hope of what is yet to come. I don't understand that. Because some days the only thing that keeps me going is the hope of what is out there. The hope of what he has promised. And the faith to believe that he is more than faithful to bring it to completion. Well, I don't understand everything, and I, I, I don't say that I've never made any mistakes. I've made mistakes. But I'm thankful for his faithfulness. For his love, his mercy, his grace that is sufficient. For his spirit that gives us the ability to cry out in the midnight hour when nobody else is there and nobody else can hear and put into words things that I can't even put into words. I'm thankful that he has given us this comforter. I'm 
Thank you, Jesus. God, I, I ask that you would help us today. Lord, you know the hour in which we all live. You know the day. We need you. We need a relationship with you that is so alive that we hear the warnings of the Spirit. That we heed the warnings. That we hear the encouragement of the Spirit. God, I ask that you would move in every heart and every mind in this building today. Give us a hunger to know you. Oh God. Allow your spirit to arise in us today. Lord, if, if we haven't come to that place of that full understanding of the spirit of God, of being baptized with the spirit, God, do it in us today. Arise in us. Spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Spring up, O oh well, today. For your mercy, for your grace, for the ability to live the life that you call us to live in faithfulness, holding on to the solid rock a firm foundation in a shifting world. Help us to be steadfast. Help us to be anchored in you. Arise in every one of us, O oh Lord, today. Holy Spirit, have your way. We surrender to you. Have your way in each of us. Help us to realize, Lord, there's more than just going through the motions. There's a relationship here. You want to open our eyes. You want to open our hearts. You want to pour into us. You want to mature us. You want us to grow in you. Lord, take us beyond where we are today. Even those of us who have served you Help us not to get stagnant. Help us not to get complacent. Help us to hunger. Help us to be like that deer panting after water. Lord, our soul to pant after you. worship you, O oh Lord. Draw us into you. Draw us into your truths. Take us deeper. Take us deeper, Lord. Have your way today. Thank you, Jesus.
blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you will show us your truths, that you will teach us your truths, that you will lead us where we need to be led. Help us to be those vessels. Help us to be that clay molded in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your holy name. Worthy. I want to urge us, I want to ask each of us over these coming days seek him. Pray for him to arise in your hearts, in your lives. Pray for his will to be done in each of us Pray for Infusion Church for a fresh anointing of the spirit of the power of the presence of a holy God. Have your way, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Emma, do you think y'all could do Holy Spirit come? Do you want to do that? I think y'all did that last week. Did you do that? All right, guys, you come back up here for a moment. spot I had for him to do that. I just feel like we need to do somebody. Holy Spirit come. Like a fire. Like a flood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs, the 
proverb of the week. Proverb. Okay, yeah, you want to do that? Thank you, Ava. I'm sorry to spring that on you. I, I'm just going to ask you to just remain seated. But I want you to worship the Lord. All right, you want to stand? That's up to you. Whatever the posture, I don't, it doesn't bother me. But I want you to, I want you to sing this song. And let's sing Holy Spirit. Come.
and we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We exalt your name above every name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Can you give him praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our prayer is to allow God to arise in our hearts and in our lives as his desire is to do today. I want us to start doing something. I've been meaning to do this for the last several weeks. But I want to start giving you a proverb for the week. This one I, I, I've had, like I said, a couple of weeks, and I forget to do it at the end of the service. And Andre reminded me. I told him to. I said, don't let me get out of here today without reminding me. Proverb of the week is from Proverbs 30, 15. And this is from the message. It says, a leech has twin daughters named give me and give me more. Just remember that. There's some things, you start feeding it, you're going to feed it from now on. So just be careful. Um, uh, that's a proverb for the week. We'll have another one. Would you, would you stand with us as you do? Let me remind you of our Wednesday night live feed. Join with us, our service next Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Come and be with us. Turn to somebody and say, look, I'm not a leech, but I'll go anywhere you want to buy me lunch today. Lord bless you. We'll see you this week.